Paul. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Paul, for introducing me and thanks for arranging this uh, webinar for us. Um, hello, everyone. I'm really happy to see lots of people coming and to join us from almost everywhere in the world, like people from Yemen, from Saudi Arabia, Emirates, India, Algeria, Philippines, Peru. Wow, this is amazing. This is incredible. Thank you so much for coming and, and turning up on time. Um, I will share my screen in a second. Okay, I hope you can see it now. Um, Paul, could you just let me know if you, if the screen um, is being shared? It is. Yeah, we can see that. Fab. Good. All right. So um, my name is Imad Abdelhamid. Um, as uh, Paul has introduced me, I work. I've, I'm, an, I'm a lecturer, I call myself an educator. I've worked in the um, education industry for almost 11 years now. I taught in the UK mainly, um, especially in the past six years, but also taught overseas in Saudi Arabia and Egypt. I um, have um, um, several qualifications in teaching, as many of you will already have, um, such as MAT, Student Applied Linguistics, um, CELTA, the popular CELTA, um, TESOL, PCELT, TOT, which is um, um, train, training of the trainers. Um, and I'm currently studying um, another postgraduate degree, which is um, um, postgraduate certificate in academic practice. Um, I'm an external examiner. I, I work for, the, for um, the Higher Education Academy in the UK. Um, um, and um, I work as a module leader on the MBA degree um, and undergraduate degrees also at the University of Central Lancashire. Um, I mainly taught English, um, English for academic purposes, IELTS, um, and other courses. Um, so enough about me. Um, let's dig into um, the research. So the topic of today is the characteristics of effective EFL teachers um, as perceived by EFL teachers and Arab students. So in my research, I focused more on what makes an effective teacher, who is an effective teacher from the eye of students and teachers. Um, so today we're going to focus on what effective means, purpose of the study, research questions, methodology and data collection tools, how I collected my data, um, and then we'll share some of the findings of the personal and socio-effective skills. And then at the end we will have some Q's and A's. Okay, so um, effective. Um, my my teacher nature will get me to ask you questions now, and uh, I'm sure you will enjoy being a student um, at least for today. So, um, Paul, could you share the poll, please? So, what we'll do now, we'll ask you a question, and um, I want you to tell me: Do you think you are an effective teacher? Yes, no, or you don't know. Can you see those responses, Ahmad? Uh, no, I can't oh. see. No. All right. Okay. Let me, let, let me just give, give give me two seconds, and then I'll I'll uh, I'll display the the answers. Hang on a second. Give people another second. Okay. Oh, I can see him now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, so. 67% of people have said yes, four have said no, uh, which is quite interesting. And about 28, they don't know whether they are effective teachers or not. First of all, I'm glad that we've got a lot of people who are confident about themselves and, and they, they know that they are effective teachers. Um, those who don't think they are effective, I'm sure that there are some um, um, good practices that you have. Um, you probably don't know that you do um, a great job um, because usually, well, f f some people always think that they always want to do better and um, they sometimes tend to focus more on um, the weaknesses that they might have and forget about the great strengths that they, they also um, have. So um, I'm sure after today's session, you, you will also see some of the qualities that you might think, oh, I've, I've got that. I think I'm, I'm, I'm an effective teacher. 
Um, so next, effective. Again, my, um, my teacher nature. Another question. So first of all, we need to, uh, to define the word effective. So what it means. Um, I'm going to ask you some questions now. I want you to answer um, in the chat. Okay, you could answer with a few words, a sentence, a phrase, doesn't have to be a long answer. So what do we mean by the word effective? So could you type in the chat what you think the word effective means? What comes to your mind when I say the word effective? Encouraging, influencing people, creative, successful, productive, Oh, so, many, so many answers, I can't even read them. Yeah, well, great, professional, um, being able to communicate, creative, change makers, communicative, successful, communicative. I can see the word communicative and creative being repeated, influential, good. Um, you, might, you might be interested to know that in my research, I wanted to use the word influential instead of the word effective, but it was a bit tricky um, to, to go into that route, so I'm, I'm, I had to choose the word effective because it it resonated more with uh, my research questions and purpose. Good, yeah, okay. So um, after the next question, um, who is an effective teacher? So we define the word effective. Okay, now who do you think an effective teacher? Lots of answers still coming. I know the first and the second question might, might be similar in a way. Um, some, some of you have already started defining an effective teacher directly. Um, good. The one who meets the lesson outcomes. Wow. The answers um, um, come up so quickly, I can't even um, read, but, but it's good. Good listener. I like that one. Skills and communication. Raise interest. Successful learners. Okay, it's very interesting answers here. Inspiring. One who means skills communicator, professional, a good guider, um, interact well. Good. So you see some of these um, um, sentences and, and qualities in my research already. I'm glad to see some of them. Good. Fantastic. Eden is. Oh, who's Eden? We don't know. Somebody put in the answers, Eden. Uh, attractive. Oh, well-educated. Motivates people. Yeah, motivates people. Okay, good. You will see, please, guys, when, you see, when I share with you the qualities that I have used to collect my data, I want you in the chat to, to tell me which ones you've already mentioned before, because you will see many of these will be already in, in the questionnaire that I give to the students. Okay, the, the next question, how do you know if you are an effective teacher? So what makes you think that you are an effective teacher? What are the parameters or the qualities that you, that you would have so that you can say, oh, I'm an effective teacher? Earlier, some of you said, I'm an effective teacher. Some said, no, I'm not an effective teacher, but some didn't know how to answer the question. So how would you judge whether someone is an effective teacher or you personally? From students' feedback, students, 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 I can see lots of students' feedback, student responses, student opinion, um, which is great because obviously it means that you you focus more on your students and you have a lot of interest in your students and that's fantastic. You, the, the students are uh, the main thing in the education process. So good through assessment, assessment, student assessment, student feedback, self-reflection, very good one. Guys, you've said so many interesting things here. I'm, and and now, I now want to revisit my research and add some of your thoughts into my research and perhaps try to, to um, come up with new research questions and do more research into this area because if you, you put, them, put some really good ideas in the chat. We are a good student. Yes, Abdelaziz, you are a good student. Well done. Peer observation. Yeah, so from, from others, from colleagues. Fantastic. Good. Okay, so fantastic. Well done, everybody. So, okay, so 
effective. The word effective. Now I'm going to move on and I will talk about what effective means and how I defined it in my research. Um, so the word effective means being successful in producing desired or intended result. Um, this is according to Oxford Dictionary. So that's just the definition of the word. This definition is agreed by all researchers in all fields, despite the various perceptions on effectiveness. It's difficult to define what an effective teacher means in one sense, because there are many definitions which can be partially or totally true from the point of view of some researchers, such as um, Jenkins, 2005, James, 20, 2002, and many others. Almost all the definitions on the effectiveness of teachers look at the bigger picture from only one perspective. Is it hard to define? Yes, it may seem hard to find one definition that is common and suitable for all contexts because the definition basically reflects some of the researcher's personal ex exper experiential, cultural, and field characteristics. So most studies focused on the characteristics of effective teachers from the viewpoint of both teachers and learners from various educational contexts, such as high school students, uh, by Park and Lee 2006, and prospective students by Walls, Nardi, and Hoffman 2002, and graduate students by Shi 2005, due to the fact that effectiveness is considered to be an elusive concept, as, as, as described by Denser um, et al. in 2013. So, teacher effectiveness. In the research, characteristics of effective English language teachers as perceived by learners of English, which is very similar to my topic. Zamani and Angari 2016 stated that although much work has been done to identify the characteristics of an effective teacher, there's no consensus model of the ideal teacher, his or her desirable characteristics, behaviors, or qualifications. However, Campbell et al. Um, in 2012, in their book, Assessing Teacher Effectiveness, stated that teacher's effectiveness is how the teaching methods, classroom management, teacher and student expectations, and classroom resources affect the student's learning, which seems to be inclusive, yet a specific definition. You can see now from all of these definitions and what other researchers in, in the ELT field have come up with are very similar to the ones I've already mentioned in the chat or it will be covered under one of these um, umbrellas, which is good. It means that um, we've got really good uh, teachers here who are very um, well informed. All right, so the purpose of the study, why, why, why did they choose the word effective or effective teachers? Um, so as, as a teacher and as every one of you, I always wanted to know what makes me a good effective teacher. I'm sure you're also interested in, in knowing this, and it's obviously why you're here today. You clearly have a lot of interest in your student success, and you're here to know how to be an effective teacher. Um, it's also part of my personal life because um, I'm gonna tell you a little story now. Um, my favorite teacher at school was my, um, when I was um, young, when I was in the primary school, my favorite, English, my favorite teacher was the English teacher. And always remember the way he taught us as students and how he made us feel in the classroom. This teacher is undoubtedly one of the main reasons why I have a lot of passion in English and learning languages in general. And um, when, I, when I got to choose my major at university, I, I chose English because I loved English and, and language in general. And where did I get that love from? I got that love from um, 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 the inspiring teacher, which I had um, in, during school time. But when I became a teacher myself, I always wanted to know how to be a good and influential teacher, um, a teacher whose students look forward to his class. And I always had questions in mind, who is an effective teacher? Is he someone who, um, is, is he someone who is easygoing, kind, friendly, helpful, humorous? Or is it someone who has a lot of experience and many teaching qualifications? Is he or she someone who has high English language proficiency? Is he or she someone who motivates students, manages the classroom effectively, pushes students to achieve higher grades, achieves high evaluation from supervisors? You see, those those questions always were in my mind when I started teaching. I kept thinking, how, how am I going to be a good teacher? 
how do I how do I make sure that I'm I'm an effective teacher? And you, many of these response, many of these examples, you've already put in the chat, which which means that we all share the same kind of understanding or perception of of effectiveness, um, although differently. So some uh, one person might have a different point of view to others, but they will you will see that there there are common things shared by all of us as educators. So the purpose of the study, so um, why have I done this? Because there was a little research about the characteristics of effective EFL teachers from the point of view of EFL Arab learners and EFL teachers. In much of the literature, it can be noted that the attributes cited by students as characteristics of effective teachers were often at odds with the qualities that the teachers themselves found to be most important. So you will see discrepancies be between students' opinions and teachers' opinions. On that account, the present study was conducted in order to establish a profile of the qualities that Arab EFL learners and EFL teachers view as descriptive of an effective English language teacher in the UK. The results of this and similar studies may be useful in both the practical and theoretical sense, as they can inform teachers about the specific teaching methods and personal qualities that are considered by students to be most important, allowing them to shape their practice in order to meet the needs of the learners. In addition, the, the findings of, um, of, this re of this kind of research can inform educational policy and decision makers in formulating teacher development programs. So these were uh, the, the main purpose um, of the study. Research questions, I had three research question, questions that I wanted to answer in my research. So um, the first one being is, what do EFL teachers perceive to be the characteristics of an effective EFL teacher? What do Arab students perceive to be the characteristics of effective EFL teachers? And are the characteristics of effective EFL teachers perceived by students different from those perceived by the teachers? We will see now. We will see now um, these results because you would be surprised with some of the data. Um, so you, hopefully, you find them really interesting. Um, so, in terms of methodology and data collection tools, how have I collected my data and what kind of methodology I used? So, I used mixed methods. So, basically, I collected data using questionnaires. So, I gave out questionnaires to both teachers and students. The same questionnaire was shared to um, both teachers and students. Um, I also conducted semi-structured interviews and I met um, some teachers and some students to speak to them about um, um, the characteristics of effective EFL teacher and to get um, um, more of um, an insight um, on their opinions and their thoughts. Um, in total, in terms of the participants, I had around 113 teachers participating in this research and 151 students. So in total, I had over 260 participants in this research, which was great because I was actually thinking that I'm, I'm gonna get only like 30. That was my aim, that was my target. I wanted, I wanted only about 30 people, but luckily um, many people were really helpful and um, they, they, they gave me their, their, their insights and I'm, I'm really grateful for them because if it hadn't, um, if it hadn't been for them, they, they, this research wouldn't have um, really good results and we wouldn't have got that insight into um, this topic. Okay, um, so findings. Um, I'm gonna share with you some of the findings about the personal and social effective skills. Just to let you know that in, uh, in my research, I divided the characteristics of effective EFL teachers into four categories, okay? Um, so some of them are personal skills, socio-effective skills, um, and, and subject knowledge, and pedagogical skills. So those were the four main categories in my research. Today, we will be focusing on um, some of the data that I collected um, on the personal and socio-effective skills. Not all of them, because there are so this is just far too much to, to talk about in one webinar, but I've I've selected some, some of the most interesting findings and included them in, in today's webinar. Um, and um, I have included, um, you will see in the next slides, 
um, also a, um, a screenshot of part of the questionnaire. So you will see here, this is a screenshot of the questionnaire, part of the questionnaire that was given to both teachers and students. So basically what they had to do is that they had to look at the, um, this sen sentence here or this um, phrase, an effective English language teacher should be a native speaker of English. And then on the, on the right hand side, you will see strongly agree, agree, uncertain, disagree, or strongly disagree. So basically each, each participant will give their opinion. So um, to what extent do they agree with that sentence? An effective English language teacher should be a native um, speaker of English. So if, um, and then they choose, for example, they choose uncertain. Um, or if they agree with the sentence, they would, in, in their mind, they should read it like this. An effective English language teacher should speak the student's first language. And if they, if they agree, they can choose either strongly agree or agree. You will see that I have strongly agree, agree, uncertain, disagree, and strongly disagree. And you will see there are some items from one to 10, for example, be a native English um, speaker, speak the student's first language, be young, be experienced, have a sense of humor, have a positive attitude, be open to criticism, be flexible, stick to administrative rules and regulations and dress formally. This is only part of the questionnaire. This is not the whole questionnaire because it's quite big. So I just, I'm just giving you um, this as an example to see how um, the questionnaire looked like um, for students and teachers. Okay, um, now um, to some of the data. All right, now we're going to, I, I want this to be as engaging as possible, okay? So I put here, you will see on the left-hand side, the students, um, these are the results from the students. And I put agree, disagree, and uncertain. And I will put here now, in a second, you will see the percentages of the students who agreed on this item, for example, be strict, and those who disagreed or uncertain. In the middle, you will see the items of the questionnaire or the qualities that, um, that I've used to, to judge the, the effectiveness of teachers. And on the right-hand side, you will see the teacher's results. So left-hand side, that's student's results. Right-hand side, that's the teacher's results. Okay, so, okay. As I said, I wanted to be as engaging as possible. So I'm going to read out the sentence and I want you to tell me how much do you think the student agreed or disagreed with that quality? So for example, be strict. What percentage do you think the student agreed? How many of the students are? Do you think that, um, is it like 50% of them agreed or 60 disagreed? So what do you think? So when you put a percentage, I want you to tell me whether 15% agreed or disagreed. And then when I show you the result, let's see who's gonna get it right or get something right. Okay, I can see a variety of answers there. So you see you as teachers, you will see you have different point of view. So some of you would say our oh, 15% agreed or 75% agreed, but let's see, let's see what the student said. All students, 100% of students expressed that effective English language teachers should be strict. I was surprised, um, like many of you, because no one in the chat has put 100%, but I was surprised because I always thought, hang on a second, I think, I think being some students don't like this, the teacher to be strict, but apparently it's, yeah, exactly. So some people are very surprised. I was surprised as well, because I thought, I always thought that students didn't like a strict teacher, but it was interesting. Okay, let's see the teacher. What about the teachers? How do you think the teachers responded to this? Ninety percent agreed. Fifty percent. Eighty percent agreed. Ninety disagreed. Okay. So let's see. In terms of teachers, look look at the result. Thirty two percent only agreed. 45 disagreed, 23 were uncertain. 
And you see, just from the item, you can see how different the opinions are between the teachers and students. All students think that they wanted the teacher to be strict. The teachers, they were, they had different views. And you can see this in the chat as well. In the chat, not, not all of us agreed on the same thing. Some of us said 80, some of us said 60 or, or 70. So it's, it's really interesting, right? Okay, the world is diverse, it is. Um, okay, let's move on to the next one. To be friendly, yeah? We all love this one. Be friendly. An effective English language teacher should be friendly. Um, agree, disagree, or uncertain from the student. What do you think the student said here? 100% agreed. Of course, 100%. Yes, of course, 100% agreement from the student side. What about the teachers? Okay, now we're talking about the teachers. How do you think the teacher responded to this item? Okay, let's see. Um, okay, so there you go. There is the answer. So 41% of teachers agreed. 55 disagreed, yes. When I, asked, when I asked some of the teachers in the interviews, they said, I don't need to be friendly to be an effective teacher. Maybe it's a good thing to have or to be, to be friendly to students that maybe, maybe it's nice, but it's, it doesn't make me an effective teacher or I don't have to be an effective teacher. Um, exactly, Nadia. I, well, I asked, I asked some of the, I only asked a few teachers, I didn't ask all of them, obviously, because I, I don't have time to ask hundred and, and over hundred teachers, but some of the teachers that I asked, they gave me some, some convincing answer. They said, I can teach. I go to the classroom, I teach, I, I get the students to be engaged. I achieve my results that I don't have to be friendly to students. Um, but how can one teach without smiling? Some people can, can and you never know. <laughs> okay. Um, so that was uh, Canon's comment. How can one teach without a smile? Well, there are people who can do that, and there are people who does that. Um, but also, we are we are human beings as well. I mean, um, we come we we it's probably I don't know. But for some people, it might be hard to smile all the time. Um, I like to smile all the time to students, and I'm always like the smiley teacher. But some other people maybe. Um, they, 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 they don't like to do that or they don't want to do that or they don't see um, a reason to of doing it. It depends on the age of students. Okay, so some, some people are asking about the age of students and they think that this could be related to age of students and you're probably right. Um, but that's, that's, that's another like um, um, looking in, deeper into, into the data. But um, all right, so let's, 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 let's um, carry on and look at the next characteristic, which is be flexible. Okay, now the next one, being flexible. Let's look at the students. Students. Oh my God, I, the, the comments in the chat are flying. I can't, I can't read all of them going so quickly, which is good. Keep going guys, keep going. Yes, we want to see your answer. This is, this is so good. So 99% of students agreed, only 1% disagreed. Um, and they, they thought that they wanted the teacher to be flexible. And um, when I asked some of the students why, or some of the students who, who I interviewed, why do you want them to be flexible? They said, um, sometimes I'm late to the class and it's because, I don't know, there was a, the, the roads were quite, um, there was a huge traffic or I, um, I slept too long and I went to class late. So I want the teacher to be flexible and also to be flexible with the marks to, to try to give us good marks when, when it comes to flexibility. Um, so yeah, how about the teachers? How about the teachers? Good question. Somebody asked how to be flexible and strict. Yeah, they want, they want super teachers. So that's what the students expect. They want a teacher who can be strict but also flexible at the same time. So teachers, 37% agreed, 58% disagreed, and 5% were uncertain. Again, uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot going on here, right? 
All right, have a sense of humor. <coughs> <clears throat> to have a sense of humor hmm students what do you think students said here Eighty eight percent of them agreed and twelve percent of them disagreed so when we say disagreed um, perhaps that they don't like um, a humorous teacher, but perhaps they didn't see this quality as an important quality. Perhaps they saw it as, okay, maybe if, if the teacher is humor, maybe nice, but it's not really important or it's not, it, would, it wouldn't affect my learning, for example. And also the problem here is, but let's, let's look at the teachers first. What about the teachers? What do you think the teacher said? Thirty-two percent agrees, fifty-seven disagreed, and eleven were uncertain. Um, you'll see. I can see. I can see a trend happening here. The student usually on one side or the other so far, and the teachers. You see, like a variety of answers. Like there's, there's a bit of a divide between what teachers um, um, believe. And um, yeah, but the thing about being humorous, though, sense of humor can be totally different from one culture to another. So what I might consider as something funny, another person from another culture or another country or different background, they might not see it as a funny thing. So being humorous, well. So the teachers, okay, so that's a good question. Somebody in the chat said, um, we're teachers only from the UK. All right, so at the end, we will leave some time for questions and answers. So keep uh, keep this uh, question till the end be a native speaker of english so let's look at the students this is one that is that always causes debates to be a native speaker of english how much of students thought that this is important Fifty-seven percent of them agreed, which is more than the, which is the majority of the students. Um, Twenty-one percent of them disagreed, and twenty-two were uncertain. So people were like, um, "We don't know. We're not sure." And maybe for them it didn't matter for those twenty-two percent, and for for the other twenty-one percent as well. So, um, um, so about forty-three percent they disagreed or were uncertain and 57% agreed. How about the teachers? How about the teachers? How about the teachers? Let's, let's look at the teachers' results. 50% agreed, 39% disagreed, and 11% were uncertain. Mm. This, is, um, this area always causes debates on social media and on platforms and people, especially for businesses and, and institutional institutions, sometimes they require the teacher to be a native speaker of English. Um, they, they, have, they could have some reasons behind that. It could be for, I don't know, the culture where they teach, always uh, the, the perception of students there, they, thought, they think that um, um, a native English speaker would be um, better in teaching the language. Um, but also um, only 50% only of teachers agreed, the rest disagreed, which is quite interesting. So we here, we got um, about 40% disagreed, 50% agreed, and 11% were uncertain. We're not sure what to say here. <clears throat> oh, 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 I shared this by mistake, sorry. So students speaks, so speak students first language. So basically let's say if I teach in Italy, um, um, I, the, the students would expect me to speak Italian, for example. I know some people saw it, sorry, I clicked, I clicked on the cursor uh, too quickly. So 57% of students agreed, 20% disagreed, and 23% were uncertain. Now here you might see an interesting point because 57% of the students agreed that they needed the teacher to be a native speaker of English, 
but also the same percentage of students, which is 57, they agreed on the, the fact that the teacher should speak their first language. Now, they, they, it, it seems that the students expect the teacher to also understand or at least, um, well, speak or at least understand their first language. Um, there wasn't much of uh, data on how fluent they want the teacher to be in their first language. So quite an interesting point too. How about the teachers? What do you think the teacher said? Thirty-eight percent of them agreed, fifty-one disagreed, and eleven percent were uncertain. I can see where the disagreement from the teachers coming from because they, in 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 our field, we always think that you always have to teach in in English only, and and English should be the main. Um, um, the main language in the classroom and and the teacher doesn't have to speak the student's first language okay the next one because we still have other um, other ones so I'm just gonna go um, through them quickly so as I go through them in, in the chat keep keep um, keep typing and, and guessing the right answer but I'm gonna have to go a bit quicker here uh, because I'm, I'm aware of the time that we have so experienced 88% of students, which is the majority of students, agreed that they want the teacher to be experienced. The teachers, only 34% of them thought that being an experienced teacher makes you an effective teacher, which means that 54%, um, which is the majority of the, of the teachers, disagreed on this item. So they, they, didn't, they didn't think that being an experienced teacher would make you necessarily an effective teacher. So if you don't have experience, it's not necessary. <clears throat> you can still be effective if you're not experienced. Um, some teachers, when I interviewed them, they said teachers are born teachers. If you if you if you if you got if you got what it takes to be a teacher, you can be an effective teacher even if you haven't got any qualifications or anything. But we'll talk about this later. Um, perhaps in the next uh, in the next seminar when we talk about the um, um, the subject knowledge. All right, be caring, to be caring. 85% <clears throat> of students agreed. And on teacher side, 43% of them agreed, 50, 51 disagreed. And when I asked um, some of the teachers, they said, yeah, I, but the problem with, when, I, when I asked the teachers, the teachers who I asked um, in terms of during the interviews, most of them, agreed on this so I couldn't really see why the other teachers disagreed on this so that's perhaps another item to discover later in future research be patient <clears throat> be patient 100% some some people have already put that in the chat 100% agreed yes definitely <clears throat> excuse me so yeah teachers want, want them well we, we're always patient and the students expect us to be patient Let's see the teachers. The teachers always surprise me. <laughs> Some teachers in the interview said, yeah, I can be, I can be patient most of the time, but there are times that I can be, that I can, I can feel impatient because the students don't do their homework or they don't come to class on time. And it's always like a reflection of the students' bad behaviors. So um, I, I was trying to put it in a nicer way, but I didn't know how to do it. But yeah, so some people, because we're not perfect, right? Sometimes we get angry. Sometimes we are like, we, we're, we're focusing all the time on the lesson plan. I need to, I need to carry on the next activity. I need to um, finish my class on time. I need to deliver the learning outcomes. I have, I, have, uh, I have another class to go and catch up. So we're all human, right? Alleviate students' and anxiety in class. 87% of students thought that this is an important quality and <clears throat> only 40% of teachers agreed on this. So the teachers, 50, 55% of them disagreed and it's probably they think it's not the teacher's responsibility to alleviate students' and anxiety in class. It, they thought that it perhaps is the student's um, responsibility, not the teacher's responsibility. Okay, <clears throat> we've got some items here. Um, I will just, again, I'll just go quickly because I'm aware of the time. So 80% of the students agreed on this one, which is praise students for good ideas or for their effort. And 41% and of teachers, almost half 
the percentage of students agreed on this one. Um, 58 disagreed, and I wasn't quite sure why. So don't ask me that question. So perhaps you tell me why they think they disagreed on this one. Build meaningful relationship with students. 89% of students agreed. Teachers, not so much. So thir only 33% of them agreed. Um, some of the teachers think that it's, um, it's only a professional um, and strict relationship that I should have with the students. I don't, I don't need to build any uh, meaningful relationship with the students. I don't know why, perhaps, perhaps you tell me, perhaps you tell me why. Um, yeah, I need, I need to drink some water. Thanks, thanks, um, thanks, uh, Oli Sigan, um, for, for looking after me. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll drink some water later. Um, pay attention to students' personal needs. 100% of students, 35 from the teachers. Address students by their names, so they know their names. 100% on the students' agreement and 42% agreement from the teachers. Help students inside and outside the classroom, 84% from student side and only 37% from the teachers. Help students to develop self-confidence in order to learn English well, 100% from the student side, teachers, 68%, we're seeing a bit of a progress here, the teachers agreeing on this quality a little bit more. Um, but again, they didn't think that it's the responsibility of the teacher, perhaps. Not lose temper or get angry, 100% of students agreed, the teachers only 40%. Can, can you see the difference between the results of the students and the results of the teachers now? Um, listen to students' point of view and opinion and let them express themselves, 84% on the students, uh, from students' side, they all agreed, and 67% from teachers um, agreed. So. You see, you see, look at look at the results. You see more agreement from the student side on things that I personally thought it's just common sense, but we are all different teachers. We all have different way of thinking, and we all have, um, um, we all have. But yeah, yeah, that was that was quite an interesting one. The three percent who disagreed on this. Um, let them express themselves or let the students' uh, point of view. I think sometimes, I think this, some of the students might have thought maybe in the way we decide the way we are assessed or when we, um, 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 so for example, if a student doesn't like the way the assessment is, they, they can express their opinion and change it. I don't know. It could be many things. It could be an area that could be investigated. This is just like an overall of uh, uh, the results together, put together in one table. Um, <clears throat> just final words, um, considering the fact that every teaching or learning situation is distinctive and that the subject differ from one to another, some teaching behaviors may be viewed as effective in one environment and less effective in another. For example, a history teacher and an English language teacher may be assessed on various characteristics of effective teaching. And from my experience as an EFL learner myself, I believe that there's one teacher who can make you love and enjoy learning and um, enjoy learning English, whilst another teacher may be the reason why you may lose it. So I'm sure that everyone here had the same experience. Um, and there is always the, that teacher who you um, wait the class, but there, there may be also the other teacher who you really don't want to see every day. So uh, just bear that in mind and, and deal with your students. Um, <clears throat> because you know your students better than anyone else. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, question and answer. I'm glad that we now have some question and answers. <clears throat>